Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Learn Athletic Live number five. Uh, in this webinar, we'll talk about how to do the field scoreboard in Athletic Live while using field links to send data up to Athletic Live. Uh, we'll talk about how to set it all up, talk about how to use it, and we'll take a look at how horizontal events, vertical events, and multi-events look on the field scoreboard. My name is Ben Thomas. I'm the creator of Athletic Live, and I'll be hosting this webinar today. If you have any questions while I'm going through the, uh, the discussion, please feel free to use the Q&A button uh, on your Zoom controller. And uh, we have two moderators tonight, Graham Dudick and Alan Rasmussen of Athletic Timing, and uh, they'll be able to answer any of your questions. And if you've missed any of our previous Learn Athletic, Learn Athletic Live webinars, or uh, just want to take a look at one of them again, uh, we do have a page that lists all those out. It's help.athletic.live slash timers slash learn dash athletic.live. And uh, that link should be in the Zoom chat right now. So first things first, we'll talk about how to set this all up. So uh, there, there are a few pieces to this. Uh, with links, they've got two programs, uh, NetExchange, that, that allows you to uh, send data from to and from field links, and then of course field links to enter the data. And then we've also got our middleware program, Athletic Live Local, that will handle taking scoreboard data and standings from field links and sending it up to Athletic Live. So we'll take a look at how to set each one of these programs up. And luckily, once you set them up once, uh, it's not too hard to use for future meets. Then we'll actually enter some data into field links and take a look at how it looks on the Athletic Live field scoreboard. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, when, we, uh, when we set a person up, how that looks, uh, when we make a mark, and we'll take a look at standings. So as you continue to enter people, you'll see standings populate, and we can look at standings in a compiled fashion between flights, or we can also look at them in flight order. So it could be useful if you're on flight three of seven of a, of a big invitational shot put. It might be good to take a look at flight three and see the list of people as they throw as opposed to just looking at the entire list of standings. We'll also take a look at our field dashboard, which is just a summary of all our ongoing events that are happening right now. So you can take a look at the dashboard and see the shot put, see, uh, see the javelin, see anything that's going on right now. And we'll also take a look at how you, how you can delete the scoreboard if some data gets up there uh, that you might not want or that might be from another meet or something. We'll take a look at what that, those use cases are. And our webinar tonight will probably last about a half hour. So requirements, of course, you need the links programs, NetExchange and Field Links. Uh, you do need Athletic Live Local. Um, and we'll, if, we'll, we'll take a look at how to download that in just a minute. If you're using high tech, you'll need the field event plugin to export data uh, to go into Field Links. And I believe in Meet Pro that's included. Um, and then I also highly recommend that you invest, if you're going you're gonna to start doing this at lots of meets, that you invest in an internal wireless network to connect up your field links machines and your net exchange machine. Uh, it just saves a lot of headache as opposed to having a bunch of tablets out in the field um, with, with Wi-Fi and things can go out and you end up getting some spotty standing. So when you're using field links, highly recommend that you uh, do that internal wireless network and um, we won't go over this as part of the demo today, but just something to keep in mind if you're if you're considering starting to offer field links at some of your meets. Uh, today, we'll, we're just going to focus on uh, setting everything up and sending data from field links and seeing how that looks on Athletic Live. If you'd like to follow along, uh, you can take a look at the meet that we're going to be using today at anet.live slash learn5, and that link should also be in the Zoom chat. So first things first, how do you enable a meet to use the field scoreboard? So I've already created a meet here, just call it the Sheridan Field Test, and I'll click on Edit. And when we scroll down, when you're selecting your meet credit, make sure to select one with the field scoreboard add-on. And once you do that, you'll have the opportunity to choose a live field scoreboard. And in our case, we've selected field links, and there are three check boxes here that, uh, that are important that we'll go over right now. So first, do you want to show field series on the live scoreboard? 
99% of the time this is yes, but if there is some case where you just wanna show the best result that somebody has right now, as opposed to showing all of the series that led to that result, uh, you could leave that unchecked. But we're gonna go ahead and leave it checked and take a look at what field series looks like today. Uh, do we wanna show flight and overall standings? Yes, we do. Uh, it mentions from LFF data, so we'll take a look at how uh, standings that are generated by field links after every throw make it up to us. And I would say 100% of the time, you're gonna wanna check that box. But we will also a little bit later take a look at what happens if you don't check it. And do you wanna show wind readings? In our case, we're gonna show wind readings for demonstration purposes, but uh, if you're not doing wind readings, uncheck this. Otherwise, you're gonna get a bunch of minus 0, 0.0 <laughs> values on all your scoreboards and that's not, that's not useful. And that's all. So just making sure you select your live field scoreboard, deciding what you wanna do with these checkboxes and hitting save. All right, so let's take a look at, you know, we, I mentioned a few different programs here, um, Net Exchange and Athletic Live Local and Field Links, and they all need to send data or receive data from one another. So let's just take a brief overview of what that looks like. So on your internal network, you're gonna have all your Field Links machines and your timing laptop that's got Net Exchange on it. Um, but that laptop could have both Net Exchange and Athletic Live Local. It, uh, one could have Net Exchange, one could have Athletic Live Local. In our case today, our timing laptop is going to have both Net Exchange and Athletic Live Local on it. And this Field Links machine is uh, going to do two things. One, after every mark that's made, it's going to send these standings to Net Exchange. Athletic Live Local is going to see that there's new standings available and then send those online to Athletic Live on the internet. And after every, or whenever you select a person, it will say, it, it'll uh, denote that a new person is up right now. And when that person gets a mark, it'll say who the last mark is. So that can be good for just ultra real time, essentially, as they're clicking buttons and field links, there's data that's getting up to Athletic Live. And we'll take a look at how that works. So one of the benefits to this internal network is uh, if, if something goes wrong and you lose internet access for some reason for a couple of minutes, the data is still flowing between these, between these machines. And as soon as internet comes back, the standings will get sent up to the internet, to Athletic Live, and they'll be populated again and you'll be all set to go. In addition, if for some reason you were to lose the internal network, uh, these standings that get sent to NetExchange, uh, maybe the internal network's off for a couple minutes. Uh, once it comes back, uh, you're gonna get all the standings set to NetExchange and that's gonna get forwarded up online. And maybe there was a, a slight blackout for a couple minutes, but now all that data is back. So this piece right here is just ensuring that regardless if there's any kind of, any kind of uh, disconnection of wireless, be it internal or uh, online, that as soon as it comes back, all those standings are getting properly updated. So let's take a look at how we get everything to talk to each other. Let's start with Athletic Live Local. So if you joined in the last webinar, we downloaded Athletic Live Local and kind of went over in depth how it works. I'm just going to do that in brief right now. So if I head to help.athletic.live, go all the way to the bottom, we'll see Athletic Live Local. And the two big benefits of this are, instead of having to have all of your machines on a 4G connection, on some kind of internet, and sending data up to Athletic Live, which also means you would need to, you know, probably change ports every single time. So every single meet, you're needing to go into your field links machine and change a port to send to Athletic Live. Um, it's fine for one meet, maybe one meet a week, but if you're doing any more than that, it can get pretty tedious. Um, and you know, as I mentioned, there's also value in keeping maybe your finish links machines and certainly your field links machines off of the internet. So Athletic Live Local acts as a middleware device so that your field links machines can stay off the internet. They send data through to Athletic Live Local and then Athletic Live Local sends it to up to Athletic Live. And all you need to do for every meet is just select the meet 
in Athletic Live Local. All your ports and IP addresses can stay the same on all of these devices. Uh, and if you need to download and install it, uh, there's a link right here, but we've already got it installed on our machine today. And I'll go ahead and start it right now. Head into Athletic Live Local. And in Athletic Live Local, there are two things we need to set up. Scroll all the way to the bottom. There are field links connection settings. So first, we have this field links port. And when we send data from field links to Athletic Live Local, it's going to be on a given port. And that port is defined right here. We default it to 4260, but you can make it whatever you want. In our case, we'll just leave it as 4260. And shortly, we'll see in field links where to set this port number. We also need uh, the NetExchange directory. So when standings are getting sent from the field links machine to NetExchange, they're going to get saved in a particular directory. We need to know that directory so we can listen on that directory and see when standings get updated. So in our case, I've set this to z colon slash field. So I have my z directory, which is just my meet directory, and then I keep all of my uh, field information in this field subdirectory. So that's all for Athletic Live Local until we're ready to select our meet. Let's take a look at NetExchange. And so this directory right here corresponds with the results directory right here. So I'm going to change this to Z field. I'm also just going to keep my event files that get exported from my meet management system in that same directory. So we need to get some data to do things in NetExchange. So uh, in high tech, and of course this works in Meet Pro 2, but in high tech, I need to export the schedule and information so that NetExchange can send it down to field links. So I'm going to go to interfaces, field event scoring, update start lists, make sure that my shared location, z colon slash field, is the same as the set of event files right here. And I'll go ahead and update it. And these were here before, but you can see they just got updated. Uh, all, all the data that's needed to send uh, to, to get our events and entries into field links is now right here. And if I go back to NetExchange, there's one other piece of configuration that's important, and that's this port number. And uh, we'll take a look at this is this is something we need to set up in field links, and we'll set that up in just a second. So now that we've got Athletic Live Local configured, we've got NetExchange configured. Let's go ahead and go into field links. So it's a bit of an odd use case today because I have Athletic Live Local, NetExchange, and Field Links all on the same computer. And in just about every case, Field Links is going to be on a separate computer. Um, but that's okay. Uh, when, when we, you, you'll see when we set up Field Links to send data, we're just going to send it to our local computer uh, as opposed to sending it out to another computer on the internal network. So when configuring Field Links, I highly recommend heading to uh, Athletic Live Help. And down here under field links, we have uh, two parts to get everything all set up. And we'll run through these uh, on this webinar today. So first thing is configuring the mobile scoreboard in field links. So the mobile scoreboard is going to give us who's up now and what the last mark is. So just sending uh, little snippets of data as people click in field links to give us the most up-to-date data possible on Athletic Live. Uh, first things first, we need to download a LSS file. We've already got this on our computer, and I've already got this on my computer, and uh, we place it into this folder right here. Uh, this folder does require admin access, so just make sure you open Windows Explorer under Run as Administrator, or in some way, uh, give yourself admin access to save this folder. And then we need to set up a scoreboard. So Fieldlinks 1.9, which is the latest release, is a little bit different 
than 1.8, 1.71. Um, so if you have 1.8, 1.71, uh, we've got those directions down towards the bottom of this document, but I've got 1.9, so I'm gonna use these instructions. So we'll head to Options and Preferences, Scoreboard tab, create a new scoreboard, call Athletic Live, just select tmio.lss script in metric and English. It's going to make sure, regardless of whether you're using metric or English, it's going to send up the appropriate data. Um, standing script does not matter, but I just like to see all three of these is the same. So I set it to tmio.lss. Now, right here under serial, we need to set up a connection to send this data from field links to Athletic Live Local. So we're going to use Network Connect. We're going to use port 4260. That's the port that we have defined in Athletic Live Local right here. And because Field Links is on the same computer as Athletic Live Local, we're just going to use 127.0.0.1, but more than likely this is going to be just an internal network IP address that you set. And we have a few settings that we want to set also. So click on settings. And uh, we just need to go through and make it look like uh, this screenshot right here. So we want to turn paging off. Uh, we want to allow only individual data. Uh, we generate standings uh, online. They don't need to be sent up through this interface. Um, they're sent up through the NetExchange interface, which we'll go over in just a second. And uh, we, we want first name. Uh, we don't want the affiliation abbreviation. Um, you know, because we're not constrained by space. So if this was a small scoreboard, yeah, we probably only want, only want to do last name and affiliation abbreviation. But because someone has their entire uh, phone screen as real estate, we do want to include more information there. But you can certainly adjust that to your desire. And we need to check auto display mark and auto display next athlete and uncheck that. And we're all set. These just make sure that the scoreboard sends data as quickly as we want it to. So just a quick check here. And we are good. All right, so click OK. And we've got our scoreboard set up. So click OK here. And before this scoreboard gets loaded, we would, of course, need to restart. But we've got something else we want to do before we do a restart. So I won't restart just yet. So that's part one. We configured our field scoreboard. Now we need to allow standings to be sent up to NetExchange. So we'll click on this to go to part two. And all we need to do is head to Options, Preferences, click on Database, change this to after each throw slash jump. So every time we enter a throw or jump, standings are getting updated and they're making their way to Athletic Live. We need to send this data to NetExchange. So we're gonna use Network Connect. We're gonna use the port number that is shown right here in NetExchange, so 1950. And because we're on the same computer, we're going to use the localhost IP. So that should be all the configuration we need in finish links. So click OK. Let's restart. Let's just double check that our scoreboard loaded. OK, good to go here. So let's go ahead and load in some data. So we need to load in the events that we're gonna use. So I'll click load and click load schedule here. It's gonna start retrieving the data that we exported from iTech. And for today's demonstration, we're gonna use the girls high jump, the boys long jump, and the decathlon boys and throw. So I'll select all those, all five of those, hit okay. It's gonna bring those events in. All right, so we've done all our setup. We're all set to go. We just need the meet to start. So in Athletic Live Local, we need to select our meet. So we'll click Choose Active Meet. And we want our shared and field test, which starts today. And before we select that, it's always a good idea to go in and make sure there are no LFF files in this folder. If, they, if there are, 
they will get uploaded and you'd have to delete them. So at the, at the end of this uh, discussion, we'll talk about how to delete them, but just double check before you select the meet here in Athletic Live Local that your uh, directory here is free of LFF files. It is, so we can start. So hit submit. That's gonna set up all the processes. And now we are all set to go. So let's head over to our test meet and let's get going here in field links. So we'll start with the boys long jump. In the boys long jump, we have two flights. And let's go ahead and set up our first flight. So for our demonstration today, we're just gonna do three attempts, no finals. Hit okay. Let me check these guys in. And you'll note that there's nothing showing up here for live results yet. It's because uh, the live results are not gonna show up until first mark is entered uh, and standings get uploaded for the first time. So let's go into our first person here, make a mark. Let's do six meters. And it, standings will get sent up to NetExchange when this green button is clicked. So we'll click this button and then here very shortly, there we go, we see that the boys long jump is now a live event. So if I click on this, we'll see that the person that we, uh, the, la the last person the last person we were in was Terry Ward. Uh, he went six meters, we have a conversion right there, an attempt number, and then our compiled standings. Make that click on mobile phone, there we go. And so let's move to the next person. So when I click on James Nelson, we're now going to see an up now right here, saying that James Nelson's the person that is going right now. And let's make a mark. So let's say uh, 550. And that mark changed. Uh, so we're seeing what the latest mark is there. And once I click the button to upload standings, the standings down here will update. And let's go ahead and mark one for Stephen Long also. So we'll see here in our compiled standings, Terry Ward's in first, Stephen Long's in second, James Nelson in third. And these are our compiled standings. If we go to our flight list, we'll see them in the appropriate order. So you can imagine if you got 15 people in here, uh, it's probably best, uh, you know, if, if you're a coach and you're trying to figure out when your person jumps, when your athlete jumps, coming into the flight sheet here, and watching as people throw down the first column, second column, third column, uh, this can be a little nicer. But it's also nice too, uh, if you've got lots of flights, for someone to be able to take a look and see who's in first place right now. And make another mark here. Let's do 5.75. And we'll see that we'll get a second column here. James Nelson. And you'll note right here, there's Nelson at six meters, and then Stephen Long also at six meters. So this is also going to take care of tiebreakers. So right now, these guys, they have the, uh, they're tied for the highest and they're also not separated in their second jump. So they're tied for first. And if we were to give them, let's break this tie here. So let's go 585 for his third jump and give Stephen Long, say 586 for his second jump. Oh, gotta hit my green button. <laughs> And we'll see Stephen Long is now in first. It's going to handle all that tie breaking for you. All right, let's take a look at vertical events. So if I head to my girls' high jump. Oh, and actually, before that, let's take a look at what a second flight looks like. So uh, I'll just go ahead. Oh, got to set the event up. So once again, we'll do three attempts. Check a couple people in. And let's make a mark so we see Douglas Ramirez right there. Let's 
So we'll see in the compiled standings, Douglas Ramirez now appears as fourth place. And we also see that a second flight tab showed up. So I go to flight two, we'll see the list of all the people in this flight. And as if I were to go through and keep making marks, they would show up. We go back to compiled, we'll see that they're all in this list. So if, if, you're, if, you, if you as a spectator are wanting to find out what's going on at a horizontal event, you've got pretty much all the data you could possibly want right here. You see who's up now, you see what the standings are, and you can take a look at live flight sheets. And one thing I should note too, so I did not enter any wind. You can see that they're all uh, minus 0.0. .0. If I were to go back into flight one, let's do James Nelson, and let's do 5.1, and also enter its wind. We'll see that the wind shows up right here too. All right, let's dig into vertical events. Let's do the girls high jump. Let's go ahead and set this up uh, just for the sake of doing this quickly. We'll start at one meter, we'll end at two meters, and we'll go up every quarter of a centimeter. Check a couple people in. And let's go ahead and uh, uh, make a mark. So once again, it's not going to show up as live until you make a mark. So just give Barbara Walker a pass there and we'll see that on the girls high jump, uh, it's now live. And same with the running events, you can view this either on the field scoreboard or you can go to the event page. So on the event page now, you can see that we've got our live results, got our flights and our entries. So let's go ahead and do a couple marks here. In. And we'll see that these all start to fill in. As I make the marks. This will handle tiebreakers also. So I got a Barbara Walker. They're currently tied uh, because they have uh, they they have the same number of misses at their last made mark and uh, the, and, and uh, no misses before that. So if we were to go ahead and uh, let's say we give her an O there and Jean, I give her an O right there. We'll see that uh, Barbara Walker's in first place and Jean Phillips is in second. Similar to horizontal events, if you go to a flight, you're going to see these in flight order as opposed to standings order. So it can also be helpful if you're just trying to see uh, who's coming up next. And I should also have noted here that in the up now, you're seeing the person that uh, was last selected. And as I make those marks, they're appearing right here under up now. And when I click my green button, it's going to update the standings down here. And for the third event type, let's take a look at the boys javelin throw. So uh, it's just slightly different than a normal horizontal or vertical event. Uh, when we go into our decathlon boys javelin throw, let's just do three attempts. Check these guys in. And let's make a mark. And if I go back to my home page here, I can see that now we've got our live event, the Kaplan Boys Javelin Throw. If I click into that, 
Uh, in addition to everything we saw in the boys long jump, we also get the multi-event points too. So you can see that for this 50 meter uh, throw, they're gonna get 589 points for that. So if I do 60, 738 points, and if you were to miss for some reason, we're not gonna show any points. So now we've got three events going. Uh, what happens if we're just a casual, you know, we're just casually interested in the meet and uh, we wanna see what's going on in the field? We can go to our menu, go to the live field dashboard, and we can see all the events that are happening. So for each event, we can see who's up now, we can see the top standing, so just getting an idea of who's leading the event uh, for vertical events and for horizontal events. And if you're interested in seeing more about a particular event, you can click on this go to live event link right here. And this will bring us right to the voice long jump. So we can continue to watch the event unfold. All right, and our last thing we're gonna take a look at today is uh, how you delete a scoreboard. So I mentioned that if you were to start up uh, and, and start up an event in Athletic Live Local and you had LFFs in this directory, they would get uploaded to Athletic Live, which uh, might not be great because probably that directory's got all of your LFFs from previous, previous meeting in. So uh, to delete one of those, uh, you head to the Athletic Live admin, click on scoreboards, and uh, let's say we want to delete the girls' high jump, click on delete, confirm that, and that's going to erase all the standings that we have in our system. So if I go back here, we'll see that we no longer have any girls' high jump live results. They're not appearing under live events, and they're not in the live field dashboard. All right, so that concludes uh, tonight's webinar. Uh, a couple of resources here for you were the, uh, the help documents that we looked at, which is how to configure field link scoreboards and also how to generate uh, standings from field links, how to send it up to NetExchange, and then get that sent over to Athletic Live Local and eventually up to the internet. And our next webinar uh, is gonna be June 3rd, where uh, we're going to take a look at some cross-country stuff. We'll take a look at how to do uh, live scoreboards for cross-country, uh, how that looks different than track scoreboards, uh, specifically as it comes to showing uh, live standings and live team standings for splits and the finish. We'll also take a look at how you can show real-time team scores um, on a physical board that you have at the meet site. So thank you very much. Uh, appreciate you attending tonight. I'll go ahead here and just take a look and see if there are any questions. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions uh, if you've got any. And uh, if not, have a great rest of the week and we'll see you next week. All right, everyone, a couple questions here. All right, thanks guys. All right, so first question, uh, what are the limitations if some participants only enter into an event a few minutes before the start of a field event? Great question. So um, you would need to sync that event down again to field links. At least that's been my experience. Um, so if you change it in high tech, 
you would need to uh, update your start list. And then you'd need to reload that event. Yep, that's my understanding with field links. Um, uh, I think in field links, you can add athletes. And this might be another way to do it. Um, so I go into here. Yep, so you can add an athlete. And then you would just need to make sure you add that athlete into high tech two in the same place. And that would probably work. Um, you just need to communicate with your high tech operator. So yeah, that would be another option as well. So why don't we try it right now? So let me go to, yeah, let's go here. Let's add an athlete, just give them a high ID. Uh, let me get a team name that I have here. Okay, Madison High School. And let's just go ahead and give him a mark. Okay, and then let's go into flight one of the boys long jump. We need to add this athlete. Okay, hit okay, make sure I did that right, John Smith, yes, okay. And let's go to the boys long jump. Let's add him in. Oh, I guess I didn't give him comment number 2000, let me change that. All right, and then let's see if we can pull this in. So let's metric, event is set for English. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and change that. Metric. Okay, cool, so that worked. So yeah, so you don't have to uh, export it from high tech uh, as long as you and the field links, you as the high tech operator and the field links operator are on the same page. The uh, field links operator can add that athlete directly into field links. And then as long as you add it into high tech, you'll be all set to go. So yeah, so it's just a matter of managing that communication in the, in the thick of the meat. Thank you for that question. Another question here, uh, is there a way to use the dashboard scoreboard as what is seen on the physical scoreboard on the field? Uh, at this time, no, but it's uh, that's definitely something that, that we are working on and uh, I hope to have a webinar for that uh, sometime here in the next couple of months to talk about that. But uh, the, 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 the dashboard is not going to look good on a physical device um, at this time. Thanks for that question. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for attending today. Appreciate uh, you spending your time uh, listening to this webinar tonight. And I uh, look forward to seeing uh, summer all of you next week. Have a great rest of the week.